Um, we'll get into this in a minute, but my name is Bryn. Um, today I am going to be talking to you about CSS and all the fun things we can do with it now. Um, so hopefully you'll learn something and if not, we'll just probably have a good time. And if that's not also the case, you can speak to me after and we can talk about something more fun. Um, so the first thing I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to get as many people as feel comfortable scanning this QR code. There is not a virus or something waiting for you, but fun. Um, pretty much bar maybe 3% of things is everything is CSS or browser APIs. I'll uh, have that caveat. Um, Except, the, except that, that's, that's JavaScript. CSS is not that fun. Um, so when we see some stuff we like, just spam the button and it'll make me feel like I'm doing a good job. Or you can also do the inverse by not pressing the button and make me feel like I'm doing a bad job. Um, so, cool. Um, I'm Bryn, uh, I work for a Canberra-based business called Pragma Partners. Um, I'm just a person that likes the internet. I don't really want to be a name, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I love CSS and yeah, that's, that's about it. I'm not really that interesting. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So I'm about to do some scrolling. It'll look like it's not scrolling because you're not doing it, obviously. And it might be a bit fast because my fingers are a bit weird. But I'm going to scroll. You can see my little scroll bar on the side. But all of these animations are all done in CSS with the new, some new CSS stuff. When I get down, don't worry about what it says. We're going to just zoom past here. We'll explain it later. But it's just like a showcase of what's to come kind of thing. Except this one, because this is true. Everyone should love CSS. If you don't, you're not in the right talk. Uh, cool, keep going down, I'm going to get to some cool side scrolling business, well, right clicking, ignore that, that's the past, that's old CSS things, how we got here, no one really cares, we're kind of in the future now, get down to my little button, oh no, my page loading, each for ages are actual, yeah, cool. This is my very cool slide that's uh, very uh, CSS heavy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but these are the things I'm hopefully going to talk to you about today. And if we don't get across them all, it's because I got caught up in my brain. Um, cool. Oh, bro. Bro. <laughs> Yay, view transitions API. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to go back, aren't I? There was a QR code before. You could have scanned it and had some fun, but that's all right. I'm not going to go back because it might break again. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about trigonometric uh, functions inside of CSS and what that might mean for people that didn't like maths in high school. <laughs> um, so this is the classic... Uh, Tan, cosine, sine, Pythagoras guy with a beard. Um, yeah, basically we're going to use that little wavy thing, all uses trigonometry, and our magic source is that one. And no one really needs to know what that means. It gives you a, it gives you a number between 0 and 1. That's the gist of it. And we're just like translating up and down with an animation delay. And it looks pretty, but it's not that pr interesting, I guess. But the main thing is, is that we don't have to have any magic numbers anymore. Well, for the most part. Um, we can use trigonometry to give us predictable numbers all the time, so no more like 57.5 pixels for some random reason. Um, and to show that this is like using like actual trigonometry, we can run this ball around the edge and that's just updating a CSS custom property like the that's using JavaScript don't yeah 
<laughs> but that's just updating values and we're doing a fun thing. Stop that. <laughs> um, cool. And then we made this cool thing with trig. Yay, fun things. Yep. I probably should have had like some sort of warning if you don't like bright colors and moving bits. Um, but yeah, we're just using trig to like offset all of the diamonds from a circle and then just like rotating them. So really not that impressive, but it looks cool. Uh, <coughs> all right, now we're going to talk about CSS nesting, which anyone that's used CSS and enjoyed it probably has seen something like that before, but it was not with uh, native CSS. Your browser, fingers crossed, now supports this kind of syntax. Um, and we get some cool things out of the box with that. So uh, we can nest like we use, that we do in like SAS or SCSS kind of things. Um, I'm going to go through some stuff here. So we may have had something like this in the past. We can now have stuff like this, which will now be even better with our is pseudo selector for all the cool kids in the house. Um, we can now write our CSS to be a lot more like lean, um, much more readable. And it's just, I don't know, anyone that's tried to write vanilla CSS in the last five years probably knows the pain. Um, yeah, you might need to ignore my transitions when they do those weird things, but it looks cool. Um, we can nest media queries inside of our elements, just like SAS now. So we don't need to have a preprocessor or a postprocessor if we don't want to. Um, I found helping other people, this is really good if we want to provide like a bit of CSS in like our Drupal module. That's been super handy, actually. I don't have to like write crazy files with lots of um, long selectors. Um, and a one gotcha that kind of stumped me a little bit was the ampersand behaves differently in like native CSS nesting because your browser has actual knowledge of the object from, from the DOM. So I'm not quite sure if that actually would have produced anything meaningful in like SAS or whatever. But if we were to do this, uh, it goes and references the card element or the card selector and then just appends all of these. So the ampersand is actually referencing this. So we can make like a sort of half parent selector with it. It's kind of wild. You can do some cool things. Um, yeah, so in SAS we may have done like card ampersand dash dash header, very BEM-esque. Um, but that does not output card dash dash header in our like compiled file. So when we, when we go to using this, just know that you probably can't just copy and paste your um, regular CSS or um, well, SAS files. All right, everyone's new favorite thing, or at least mine. I abuse this bad boy like nothing else. <laughs> uh, the has selector. <clears throat> In most cases, this is a parent selector, which CSS hasn't had before, but it lets us do some crazy cool things. Um, I have some examples in here. In the last one, I didn't, because I don't really know how to give an example of something that doesn't output much. Um, but we can see here that like we might have a card and if it has an image inside, I want to update the padding. That's a pretty basic example. And that will give us something, hopefully when I click this button. Oh yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> that, that took some testing. I've like rebuilt Google Slides in Astro. Let me suggest don't do it, <laughs> but it works. Um, basically, if this has a caption, I want the border. If it doesn't have the caption, all that button's doing is like removing the caption from the DOM and the border goes away. So at a pretty low level, like you can get a lot of value just by having a few has selectors. Um, 
Yeah, bro. <laughs> Let's go. That's fire. All right. So this is not a demo I've come up with, but someone with a way bigger brain than me, but it works. Um, so in this demo, we're going to have a perfect grid using has, and it's going to check like if our layout adjusts. So if we go tall or wide and we add, add some boxes, we're always going to have like the perfect, no, it's not going to be a good perfect grid, is it? This one will be though. If we go tall, wide, we can use has to make sure we're always having the right amount of, um, like if it's landscape with a container query, we'll get to those. Um, we can check how many items there are and we can just position them all in the right spot with CSS grid. So has is pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, my suggestion is, is most people should start using this now. Um, Uh, the add button triggers a view transition but, and it adds a DOM element, but that's it. So, I mean, it's um, mostly, <laughs> like I said, uh, th yeah, there's magic. Is it supported uh, by IE6? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, so, I'm leaving. <laughs> please do. <laughs> Uh, I've tried on most of these pages to have the little uh, icons at the top. If they're green, you're Gucci in latest browsers, pretty much. Um, if they're yellow, there's a flag. If they're red, ugh. Um, <coughs> cool. All right, so container queries are also like probably in that realm of uh, has. It's pretty groundbreaking. Uh, we all know what a media query is and we kind of hate them because our whole website has to adjust to the size of our window. Everything is based on it. With a container query, we can tell, um, our, we can tell our CSS which contain, like we can create a container and tell CSS, I want you to not worry about my window, but worry about this element. And we can now just build our components in more of a vacuum than before because it's not based on the window anymore it's based on the size of the container that we define um, this will all make sense in a minute when i actually show a demo um, but basically we get access to this uh, container type and there's like two properties for that inline size and size for the most part you probably want inline size be careful adding these things because containers have their own stacking context, which I found out, which is, uh, yeah, <laughs> can break things. Um, you can also name uh, containers as well. I'm pretty sure that's on the next slide. But we have access to this uh, query, container query now. Um, and we can basically say, if our container is bigger than 700, I want my cards to be a bigger size title. Um, yeah, cool. I did do it. Cool. Container name is also a new property that we get and we can say at container sidebar, which is just the name of this. Um, basically if we've got a container named sidebar, please just listen to that one instead. Um, <coughs> cool. All right. So here's like this small demo. Um, basically if we make them big, It'll tell you they're big and this is using container queries. So literally this is all CSS and just using uh, the content, the pseudo element, like the property on the pseudo element to put in the text and stuff. But all the container queries are like changing the colors, um, making sure that their sizes are correct and just using grid to make sure that there's actually not just one size all the time. <coughs> and then we have this cool demo where we might have a house that just gets bigger and bigger. And this is all CSS, no JavaScript, no magic this time. Just lots of typing, really. <laughs> <laughs> all right, view transitions. Uh, these are based in Chromium browsers at the moment. 
but I think we could get a lot of wins in Drupal with these, actually. Um, basically, my whole talk, the whole presentation is using trans uh, view transitions between, the, like every slide is a new page, essentially. Um, but these are browser level APIs. And when you turn them on, you basically get lots of pseudo elements. Um, basically, what, uh, basically what your browser does is takes a screenshot of the current state and the future state. And then based on what CSS properties you apply to those things, it figures out all the things in between. So you don't really need um, a spa app to have cool transitions. Like the really typical one is like you've got a card with a picture on it and it, you click it and then the image like slides into the header. Um, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I did this one instead. Um, I'm going to use my keyboard for a second because it's a bit smoother. So like each one of these is just like a checkbox, a bit of hack with pictures. But as I go down, it's using view transitions to transition between state. So it's not actually like pages, but states. Um, so all the animation between those two, between all of the items is a view transition. Um, so you can get some pretty quick wins on some pages to make them look a bit more lively. Um, yeah. Cool. Scroll driven animations. Uh, at the start, I went a bit crazy cause I was skipping over it cause I knew that this was coming up. Surprise, surprise. Um, basically there's this, uh, animation timeline and then the scroll, uh, property. Um, and we can attach the root to it. So that's basically saying when I scroll on my page and this thing is in view, can you please run this animation based on, and instead of saying like one second, it's the timeline of the actual scroll, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, I didn't really think about this, but scrolling demos aren't the greatest for these kinds of things, but you just have to believe me that I'm scrolling up and down. So basically all this does is, um, the animation just shifts them up and down and the animation timeline is the thing that's like controlling their duration. So no more GSAT maybe? I don't know. That's probably a lie. Um, but we can do a lot of cool things with this. That's for sure. Um, cool. Now time for some uh, more bonus fun things that are not as fleshed out as some of these other ones, but I thought that would be cool to talk about. Has anyone ever wanted a, what they thought was a radial gradient, but not? We can now do conic gradients. So our radial gradient goes from like the center out and goes like that. Our conic gradient sort of just like draws a line all the way around. Um, <coughs> so some cool things we might be able to do with that is a cool animated border with like some sort of back backdrops. Yeah. Wow. Cool. <laughs> wow. It's real. Yep. No JavaScript for that one. Um, you could probably go to a rave. Um, <coughs> cool. Um, and then this is where it gets a bit dicey with the demo, but believe me, it works. We're going to talk about style queries, which is an extension of container queries. Um, but I also just wanted to have some stars and stuff in my talk. So I put this slide in. Um, we're going to talk about style queries. Oh, I also wanted to use this demo as well. So we could have just done this with classic uh, hover, but we're going to use each of these hovers here, uh, just sets a, uh, CSS custom property value. So it's probably better in code to show, but um, I just wanted to show more scrolling things. <laughs> but basically when we hover over these, we're using a style query. This is not a great demo because we can do this with hover, but basically it updates a CSS custom property to just another value. And we're using like CSS to check for that which if I just, yeah, cool. I am going to get into the code for a second. 
cool. Um, well, those were the changes I made right before we started. <laughs> um, it was a spinny grid. Zoom in. So you can see here we have this like at container query. And like it has this style on it. And all that's doing is checking for when hover changes to one and then running that stuff underneath. Some really cool things that you can do with that is like we can measure heights and things. That's wild actually, being able to like change our cards. Cards is a super easy example, but um, be able to change elements based on the styles within them. We can check for background colors. We can check for any property that lives in here. So like even if this filter was grayscale, we could literally change it back to not. Um, but we can get a lot of cool accessibility wins out of the box with style queries. They're not quite supported yet, but hopefully in the next year or so, we'll, we'll be cooking. Um, but yeah, uh, there's about, what, 10 minutes left, nine minutes. Um, if anyone has any questions or anything, or you had a CSS problem, I can probably help you. <laughs> like IT support. Or if I went over something too quickly. Or we can have an early mark. Yeah, Henry. Oh yeah, I use where all the time. Uh, it's really good because like it nukes your specificity. So it's really good for like resets and stuff. Um, I use is a lot. Has obviously like out of the three of them is arguably the most powerful one and the one with most that most people will find value with. Um, but I think they're all good in their own use case. Yeah, has didn't really uh, CSS in general didn't really have a way to be able to select a parent based on the children within it. Um, but now we got one, so we can all rejoice for that. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, in a current project, I have a few modules that like update the Drupal admin and they just use like native CSS nesting because I don't want to run a, I don't want to have like post CSS have to go and check in my module folders. Like it's pretty good. Like, yeah, that's, yep, that's a, that's a problem. Um, but yeah, I guess you could just have it as a progressive enhancement. I was going to say, uh, you just look at it and it's broken, but <laughs> um, yeah, Firefox will tell you and like your, your Chrome dev tools are also pretty good. I prefer the Firefox tools. They got better grid, in, grid inspectors in my opinion, um, but for the most part, it just look jank. <laughs> style in. Yeah, I guess you could probably configure style in. Uh, yes, I will also open source the half-baked Astro Dex for anyone that wants to go down that path. I don't know. I, yeah, don't recommend. Yep. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> all the places. Make all the transitions. Um, it's a free win on cards, right? Most cards, if they have an image, the same image appears on in the next page. Like it's a free win to like just give people some like richness in their user experience, I guess. Um, other things might be like you got a timeline on your page. Now you don't have to like scroll for a lifetime. You can kind of just use the transitions to transition between states in the in the timeline, I guess. Yep. 
Of course I can. <laughs> woo, yeah, woohoo. CSS only, yeah. That's my jam, that's all my uh, code pens are. CSS only something or other. Ha <laughs> ha.